to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. In the gospel of John, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. John chapter 10, verse number 27. What does it really mean? to hear the voice of Jesus. We hope that you'll get your Bible and stay tuned as we're going to let God's Word answer this very important question for us today. Welcome to the Gospel of Christ program. My name is Ben Bailey, and we're so glad that you've joined us for our broadcast today. Today's lessons are being brought to you by members of the Church of Christ worldwide. Those members of the Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their worship assembly. If you've got a Bible question or there's something you'd like to study, they'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God together with you. Also, at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your study of the Word of God. You can log on to our website, thegospelofchrist.com, and all our Bible study material is free of charge and available to you. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, whether on DVD or CD, we'd love to send that to you. You can fill out a media request form from our website, or you can call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905. On our website, we have a host of Bible study material, including transcripts, study question, question and answers, and a variety of study materials that would help you in your study of the Word of God. Friend, at the Gospel of Christ, we're concerned about the salvation of souls. That's our main emphasis. We're not concerned about your wallet. We're not concerned about hidden agendas. We just simply want to help men and women know the Word of God and to go to heaven. And so as we transition to our study today, we hope that you'll get your Bible out and have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God together. As Jesus said in John 10, verse 27, My sheep, my followers, they'll hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. John chapter 10, of course, the beautiful words in that whole text about Jesus being the shepherd and His people being the sheep. But friend, we pose the question from Scripture today, what does it mean? to hear the voice of Jesus. If Jesus said His sheep and His followers hear His voice, what does it mean to hear the voice of Jesus? And what must we be listening to the voice of Jesus about as it regards some of the most important questions in Scripture? First, let's realize that hearing the voice of Jesus means that we're going to listen to what Christ said about God his Father. And it means these things. If I'm going to hear Jesus' voice as He teaches us about God, it means that I'm going to hear what He said about loving God. Jesus said in Mark 12, verse 30 following, when He was asked by a lawyer about the greatest commandments, Jesus said the first and greatest of all commandments is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. And of course, the second like unto it is, love your neighbor as yourself. When I hear the voice of Jesus, those words resonate within my life that I must love God first and foremost with every part of my being. Friend, that's what it means to be a follower of Christ, that I have a devotion that I have a commitment to, and that I want to love Christ, put my trust in Him, and never ever waver from His teaching. Now Jesus taught us what it means to love someone as well. In the Gospel of John, Jesus also said, If you love me, what? Keep my commandments. Loving Christ and loving God means that I'm willing to submit to to bow down before and to worship and obey 
God and Christ as Father and as the ultimate sacrifice in our lives. Secondly, as we think about hearing the voice of Jesus, this means that we're going to be willing to live by every word that God gives us. In Luke chapter 4, verse 4, we are told, man shall not live by bread alone, or Matthew 4, verses 4 through 10, we're told, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. What does it mean to hear the voice of Jesus about God? It means that I'm going to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Interesting that context is, Jesus has just been tempted by the devil. And in response to the devil's temptation, he's been out in the wilderness. The Bible tells us he's out there alone. Uh, the verses tell us he was hungry as well. And so the devil throws the temptation out. If you're the son of God, prove it to me. If you're the son of God, turn these stones to bread. How did Jesus respond to that temptation? He said, no, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Hearing the voice of Jesus means that I am willing to obey and follow the teaching of our Lord and Savior. Jesus clearly taught this throughout His life. Matthew 7, 21, Jesus said, It's not everybody that says to me, Lord, Lord, that's going to heaven, but he that does the will of my Father in heaven. In Luke 6, 46, Jesus asked the Pharisees, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? And the Bible says in Hebrews 5, verses 8 and 9, that God is the author of eternal salvation to all who obey Him. If I'm going to submit to the words of my Master and my Lord, as it relates to God, I must live, not by bread, not by carnal things alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of Almighty God. Now, friend, we tie this in directly with in relation to our very next principle, and that is we've got to be willing to do the Father's will. If the Bible says it, I need to be willing to do it. Philippians 4, verse 9, Paul said, The things which you heard and learned and received and saw in me, listen now, these do, and the God of peace be with you. There's that, that ever-important little word, do. What does it mean to hear the voice of Jesus? I'm going to do what God says. Not enough just to hear. Jesus said to the churches in Revelation 2 and 3, to him that has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says. But we're not just emphasizing hearing in the sake of taking it in and knowing there's a noise that occurred, but rather hearing in the Scripture is used with the emphasis of taking it in and doing what God wants us to do. We also then would note this, if we're going to hear the voice of Jesus as it relates to God, we've got to have faith in God's care for each and every one of us. I want you to hear specifically, you know, Jesus said it, it is some of the most beautiful language in the Bible, and if I'm going to really let the words of Jesus resonate in my life, I've got to hear and take to heart what He said about God caring for me and about God caring for you. Listen to Matthew chapter 6. If you're following along, I want you to look at Matthew chapter 6, beginning in verse number 25, as Jesus discusses in detail, very beautifully in detail, the care of God. Here's what it says. Matthew 6, 25. Jesus said, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you'll put on, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds in the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to a stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field. How they grow, they neither toil nor spin, and yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will He not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows you need all these things. But seek first, 
the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. In part of hearing the voice of Jesus, I have to have the faith to trust the fact that Jesus said, God will take care of you. And that's hard and it's challenging at times as we live in this world that is so fraught with problems and danger and anxiety. Where's my next meal coming from? Where are the clothes that I'll put on my back and my family's back? Where are we going to sleep? You know, for the child of God, the Bible says, you seek first the kingdom. God will take care of the rest. I cannot help but think of the beautiful words of Psalm 37 verse 25. David said basically the same idea. David said, I've been young and now I'm old. Take a snapshot of life and here's what I know. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. You know, as we think about hearing the voice of Jesus, these four things are so important as it relates to hearing the voice of Jesus about God and what God wants us to do in this life. Let's now turn our attention to hearing the voice of Jesus as he spoke on another subject, and that is our relationship and responsibility to other people in this life. What did Jesus say about my responsibility and relationship with others? Here's what he said. Jesus first and foremost taught each of us to love one another. John 13 is a very uh, beautiful scene where Jesus, uh, he washes the disciples' feet. He gives them a powerful example of how they're to treat one another, how they're to love one another. And here's how he concludes that. John 13, verse 34 and 35, Jesus said, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all will know you are my disciples. What's my responsibility toward other people? to love them, to love lost souls as Jesus loved them, to to love those who are in sin in the sense that we want them to be saved and to go to heaven, to love those inside the family and the church of God and to have a deep abiding respect and care for all people everywhere. Listen, friend, in a world that is so fraught with prejudice and problems and man's inhumanity to man, Let's realize all men have been created by God. Genesis 1 verse 27. Let's realize that God gives us the responsibility to love one another. You remember that second commandment we mentioned earlier? The first was to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second like unto it is love your neighbor as yourself. Friend, those two commands would solve the multiplicity of problems that exist in our world today. Then we mention this. What else does Jesus say my responsibility is as it relates to others? If I'm going to hear the voice of Jesus. I've got to hear what He said about my enemies. Listen to the words of Christ in Matthew chapter 5, verse number 44. Jesus said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Verse 44, Jesus said, But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Hearing the voice of Jesus isn't always something that is easy for us to follow, meaning that at times it creates a challenge within us. And loving your enemies is indeed one of those challenges. Now, let me show you that Jesus not only said this, that He also practiced it. On the cross, as people mocked Him, as people spat at Him, as people made fun of Him up there, Jesus prayed these words, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Friend, do you ever wonder if Jesus loved His enemies? You know He did. Jesus wanted His enemies to be saved, so much so that He went to the cross for them. And my responsibility and yours is to love our enemies, to try to do good, to try to help, to try to open a door so that the gospel can be preached to those who are enemies of Christ and no doubt Christianity. Now, as we think also about the words of Jesus and hearing the voice of Christ as it relates to others, let's also realize that Jesus clearly taught that it's better to help 
than to be helped. Listen to Acts 20, verse 35. Paul mentions the words of Jesus as he thinks about the good that he can do. And he said, I want you to hear the words of our Lord where he said, It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. We often live in a society that has both hands out. Looking for a handout, wanting something, expecting everybody to give it to them. But you know what Jesus said? It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Now, friend, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with helping people who are in need. That's not the point here. But we need to be of the attitude and the mindset that I am not expectant of, nor do I deserve people to do for me. I want to try to do for myself so that I can do good to those who are in need. And so it's more blessed. If I hear the words of Jesus, I hear what he says about giving and helping and doing good to other people. What is pure and undefiled religion anyway? to keep oneself unspotted from the world and to take care of or visit the orphans and the widows in their affliction. Do good unto all men, especially those of the household of faith. James 1.27 and Galatians chapter 6, verse number 10. Now friend, as we think about hearing the voice of Jesus, let's also realize we want to hear the voice of Jesus as it relates to Himself and what Christ said about Himself his teaching, and what He requires of His followers today. As it relates to Jesus and what He taught about Himself, let's realize the Lord said we must be willing to believe in Him and we must be willing to follow His teaching. In John chapter 14, Jesus said these words, Let not, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in Me. Christ wanted us to realize that He is the Messiah, that He is the Son of God, and that without Him, there can be no salvation. This is why Jesus said just a few verses later, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. John 14, 6. Peter said in Acts 4, verse 12, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. I've got to believe He's the Son of God. I've got to believe He's the Savior of the world, that He is the Christ, and that ultimately He is both Lord and Master of my life. And I must do my best to obey Him all the days of my life. Friend, as we hear the voice of Jesus about Himself, let's also hear the beautiful invitation He gave to those to follow Him. Jesus said in Matthew 11, verse 28, these beautiful words, Come unto Me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. My yoke is easy, my burden is light, Jesus said. You'll find rest for your souls. Take my yoke upon you and learn of Me, for I'm meek and lowly in sight, the Lord would say. Jesus, as I hear His words, I hear the, the, uh, the invitation that ought to resonate within every man's heart. Come unto me, those who labor and are heavy laden. Let whosoever will come and drink freely of the water of life. Revelation chapter 22 says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Matthew chapter 28, verse number 18. And so Christ wants all men to come to Him and to ultimately be saved from their sin. What else did Jesus say about Himself? Jesus said some things also that were challenging and that are rather difficult and were difficult for some. Let me illustrate one of those to you from the Scripture. Jesus taught us, as we hear His words, that we must be willing to put Him above all else. And at times, we must be willing to forsake all to follow Christ. Listen to Luke chapter 14, what Jesus said in verse number 33. Jesus said, So likewise, now listen to these words, Whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. If I hear the words of Jesus correctly, I've got to hear Him say, put me first. All else has to take a back seat to following Christ, to seeking first the kingdom, to living as God wants us to live, and to following Him in each and every way. And as we hear His voice, let's hear what Jesus said about keeping His commands and obeying Him. John 14, 15, Jesus said, if, here's the condition, if you say you love me, keep my 
commandments. You are my friends if you do whatever I ask. John chapter 15, verse 14. It's not enough. Some people say, well, I love God and I love Christ and I've got this warm feeling in my heart. Wait a minute now. If you love me, do what I say. It isn't enough to say, I believe in the Bible. I believe in God. I believe in Christ. The demons believe and tremble. James says in James 2 verse 17, put your faith into action by letting the love of God motivate you to serve Him and to live for Him each and every day of your life so that you can really have the hope and joy of going to heaven and being what God ultimately wants you to be. Jesus also said that He wanted us to hear His voice as it relates to Him about these things also. Christ said, hear my voice as it relates to false prophets and false prophecies that are so prevalent in our world today. You know, sometimes we hear people say, God's going to do this, or Christ is coming back and He's going to do this, and the world's going to come to end on such and such day. What did Jesus say as it relates to false prophets? Listen to Matthew chapter 7, verse number 15. Jesus said, Beware, watch out for false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruits, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown to the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. You can look at a person's life. You can look at the things they've said, their fruit, and know it hadn't happened. Uh, you know, you look at people who throughout history have made all these prophecies, and one after another keeps failing. What do I know about that person? They're not a prophet of God. What they said is not true. I don't have to worry. So-and-so says, well, the Lord's coming on this day, and the Lord didn't come. What do I know? That man's a liar and a false prophet. Somebody says, God's going to do this, and here's what you... Wait a minute now. If the Bible says God's going to do this, and you said God's going to do the opposite or something different, I'm going to take God's. Let God be true and every man a liar. And so we need to hear what Jesus says and, and be confident that there are false prophets and false prophecies out there and not to let them sway us in this life. Let's also hear the voice of Jesus as it relates to the, the narrow gate and the narrow way of salvation. You know, we live in a world where people want to have this idea that everybody's going to be saved and everybody's going to be okay and, you know, you just believe in Jesus and everything's going to be all right. Does the Bible teach it that way? Look at Matthew chapter 7. I want you to see what Jesus actually said. Matthew 7. Jesus says this beginning in verse 13. Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction and there are many who go in by it. Why? Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way that leads to life and there are few who find it. Did Jesus give the impression that everybody's going to heaven? No, Jesus said it's quite the opposite. Narrow is the gate. Difficult or restricted is the way. And there are few who find it. Jesus didn't have this mindset that, you know, everybody who's got a warm feeling for me in their heart and everybody who claims to be a Christian is going to heaven. Jesus said it's a challenge. You've got to work. There are few who find the right way. I want to hear the words of Jesus also as it relates to where I put my treasure and what's really important to me in this life. Listen to the words of Jesus in Matthew 6, verse 19 and 20. Jesus said, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let's hear Jesus' words about what's the true treasure in this life. Don't focus on earthly. Don't focus on the physical, things that tarnish, things that thieves can break in and steal, that which is temporary and earthly. It's not your treasure. But put your treasure on spiritual things. Seek those things which are above, where Christ is. Colossians 3, verses 1 through 3. Let's hear the words of Jesus as it relates to going to heaven and salvation. Jesus clearly taught 
that whoever would obey the gospel could be a child of His and have the hope of heaven. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. But what does that mean, to obey the gospel and become a child of God? Here's what Jesus said about believing in Him. Hear the words of Jesus about belief. Jesus said, unless you believe that I'm He, you'll surely die in your sins. Hear what Jesus said not only about believing, but about repenting of one's life of the things that are wrong in one's life. Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, Unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Let's hear what Jesus said about acknowledging and confessing Him before men as the Savior. Matthew 10, verse 32 and 33, Jesus said, If you won't confess Me before men, neither will I confess you before My Father who is in heaven. But if you will confess Me before men, I'll also confess you before My Father who is in heaven. And let's hear what Jesus said about baptism being essential to salvation. Jesus said in Mark sixteen sixteen, He that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that does not believe shall be condemned. Did Jesus say in verse 16 of Mark chapter 16 that a person must believe and be baptized to be saved? We just noticed it. He said those exact words. And friend, that's not the only time He said something like that. In John 3 and verse 5, Jesus said, Unless a man is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Peter said, Baptism does now also save us. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21. And so friend, as we think about this marvelous idea today, from John 10, verse 27, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Here's the question we ask ourselves. Are we following Christ? Are we listening to His voice? Are we really that sheep that follows the good shepherd to the green pastures. If you've never obeyed the gospel, friend, our plea to you today is, hear the voice of Jesus, submit to His will, obey the gospel, and follow Him to heaven itself. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the gospel of Christ? The gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the gospel through TV, radio, and internet. Our motto is to take the whole gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form, or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905, or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.